in the truss problem the our main objective is to identify the nature of the forces in the truss members as well as the magnitude of forces in the truss member so there are two methods to solve the problem of a truss one is the method of joint another one is the method of section we have already seen the procedure of method of joint in our previous uh, like, uh, sessions and uh, in this session particularly we are going to focus on the method of section uh, however i would like to give a brief difference between these two method and the difference is like that in the method of joint our main focus is to calculate the or the consider the equilibrium of different joints for example if i am having a truss like this and i am applying certain force on my truss so my objective or my interest in case of method of joint will be finding the equilibrium of all these points and then I will write the equation for the equilibrium and basically what I do I write the equation for the equilibrium of joints or point with where the forces are concurrent and if I am considering a planar truss the problem will become a coplanar concurrent force system. However when we talk about method of section in method of section we basically split or break our truss and different section of the truss has been considered in equilibrium and then the system is solved considering the system combined uh, system of combined uh, rigid bodies so now let's start the method of section and i would like to introduce method of section by taking a simple uh, real life problem suppose uh, let's consider a case of tug of war there are two team team a and team b and both the team are trying to pull the rope here is the rope in uh, towards their side and suppose at this instant the system is in equilibrium means both the team are not moving in any of the direction and the system is in equilibrium suppose someone cut the rope then what will happen let someone has cut the rope from this point obviously when i will cut the rope both the team will go with the speed of bullet uh, this team will go this side and this team will go this side but i'm i want to cut the rope at the same time i don't want to break the equilibrium then what i need to do if i want to cut the rope i have to apply an equivalent force which was there previously suppose there is a tension t so i have to apply a force p which will be equal to tension t so that these member will not feel any variation and they will still feel that the, there is an equal and opposite force phi and that their system will be in the equilibrium at the same time the other part will also not be the, the, the equilibrium of team b will also not disturb and it will also be in the equilibrium so the same philosophy we apply in case of method of section and for that what we do we cut the system or our truss at any section and instead of or whenever we cut a particular member the member has to be replaced with an equivalent force and those force will become our unknowns in our uh, structure and that is calculated by applying the equation of the equilibrium that mean by applying the equation of force balance as well as the moment balance so now i am showing a problem where i am having a truss uh, there are two forces p1 and p2 values are given this is of 8 kilo newton and this is of 10 kilo newton the distances are given as 333 and all the angles are 60 degree so equilateral triangles and I am interested to find the forces in member BC, CG and GF. Here is my member BC, CG and GF. So uh, let me tell you at this point that why we have to apply method of section, why not we have to solve method of joint. In case of method of joint, what we need to do first we have to identify a joint where there are only two unknowns for this case if i want to apply the method of joint my first job will be to calculate the reactions when i will calculate the reaction i will be able to know that here my reaction ay and this will be my reaction ey then i can start solving method of method of joint by considering either the joint e or joint a 
and when I will calculate the joint A, I will calculate these two unknowns value. Then I have to move to the next joint. When I will come to this joint, I will be able to calculate these two unknowns. Then I have to move to other joint and ultimately I have to solve the problem or I have to consider minimum three joint to calculate the forces in member BC, CG as well as GF. However, in case of method of section, the benefit of method of section is that if I will use one section and I will cut all the unknowns, I will be able to get all the unknowns in one shot. In my case, uh, I want to cut my truss in a way that the all the unknown members cut in one shot. Sometimes it happens that we have to do it, this process two times. But in this problem, suppose BC, CG and CF. So this is one member, this is second member and this is third member. So what I want to make? I want to cut my truss from this section. As I will cut my truss along this section, there will be three members, member GF, member GC and member BC will be, will break. And as they, these two members will be break, one section will be uh, the member A, B and G with these three four members and the other section will be of C, D, F, E with these three cut, cut sections. So now let's see that here what will happen as I will cut my truss these three members one member is the bc member i have to put a force here and equal and opposite force will be here to remain the system in equilibrium because what is happening this part should be in the equilibrium as well as this part will also be in the equilibrium and to maintain the equilibrium i have to apply the same force which are there in this condition that means there are forces which are acting here and because of these forces definitely there will be some internal forces in my truss members and as i am cutting my truss i have to use these external internal forces as external forces to maintain the system in equilibrium so what we do we cut our truss and when we cut the members the member has to be replaced with certain external forces so that the system remains in equilibrium so i have cut my truss from here and i have added the forces one two three here similarly one two three here so now i have two section one section and second section both the sections are in equilibrium condition and i can start my problem by taking any of the section now this complete section is a set of rigid body connected to each other and there are external forces acting but before solving the problem here also we need to calculate the reaction of my truss so if i want to start solving this section first i have to calculate my reaction and to calculate the reaction i have to first go back to my original truss so the first step here also the first step is to calculate the reaction once you will calculate the reaction then you can apply section and suppose in the question instead of the forces bc cg and gf force in cd and cf have, have been asked so what i need to do in that case i can use my section place in this way so there are different ways based on the requirement of the unknown forces in the members you can cut your stress in a different way so i uh, let's see that suppose in this case someone asked to find the forces in these four members so I can apply a section in this way and then my truss will break in two. One. This will be the free body diagram of joint C where there will be four members. Similarly, the other section will be in this way where these four members has cut down. So there will be four unknown forces in my other part. Similarly, if I want to cut my truss, I can break my truss simultaneously in the three sections. So here I am using two section plane, one section plane here, second section plane here. So now there are three sec parts. One part belongs to this part, second part belongs to these members and third part belongs to this member. So here is my section one, two and three. And as at the moment I am cutting a member, I am adding a force there. That means the member, the, the system will not have any effect because of the sectioning the system will remain in equilibrium but now there are three section and all the three section will remain in equilibrium similarly i can cut my truss in this way so the, when i will cut my truss upper portion and lower portion will become se uh, two separate sections and there will be number of unknowns here i would like to add that when i have cut the my truss from here that number of unknowns appear in my section are three here 
when i am cutting my truss in this way the number of unknowns are 1 2 3 4 4 when i am cutting my section in this way there are three unknowns for but second section there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 unknowns in this section there are three unknowns when i am cutting my truss in this way there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 unknown here and also 1 2 3 4 5 6 unknown here because as i will cut a member there will be a force i have to introduce a force here for example i am cutting this member so this will be my force ba this will also be my force ba similarly all the other forces will be there and as these forces are not available to me these forces are unknown to me then when i am going to consider the equation for the equilibrium of this section these forces will become unknown for my equation so now you have to keep in mind that in most of the cases when we cut a particular section we try to cut only three members maximum three members why because as i will cut a particular section and then i am going to apply the equation of the equilibrium which is a set for on a set of a connected rigid body and i know that when i will apply the equation of the equilibrium i will be having one equation for the force balance that would be horizontal force balance one equation for the vertical force balance and the third equation for the moment balance so maximum three unknowns can be calculated by uh, a set of free body diagram by a single free body diagram so if i am cutting a particular section most of the time i try to cut maximum three members but in many of the cases it is not possible to cut only three members so in that case we cut maybe the four member or the five member and in and we have to use uh, multiple times we have to cut a particular truss to get the answers so now i have cut my truss in this way and let's solve the problem and try to find the unknowns so now here i have cut my truss and you can see here this is members 1 section 1 and section 2 and i would like to start with the my section 1 so here is the this is the same diagram here and here but now i am taking the diagram in a larger way and here i have calculated the reaction and for calculating the reaction i have considered the truss all the values are given as 3 here and there is no any horizontal force so this reaction will going to be zero and when i am take the taking the moment at point a there will be 8 into 3 10 into 6 and ey into 9 however the sense of these two forces will be clockwise and sense of the other force will be counter clockwise i have already explained how to calculate the sense in my other videos so if you are not able to understand how i am calculating the sense you can see my other video but here also i am briefing you that if i want to find the sense of force of 8 newton what i need to do i have to put a pin here and i have to remove all the other forces and i have to see that if i will apply a force in the downward direction what will happen to the whole structure as here if i am applying a force in the downward direction the structure will try to rotate in the clockwise sense about this point a and if i am taking the clockwise moment as positive and counter clockwise as negative here will be my equation and my reaction are coming out 8.67 kN and 9.33 kN so now let's come back to our section this is my section and in my section the this this is the left left side section these are the two section and i am considering this section so this is my left side section and here are the uh, reaction here is the 8 kN force and as i have replay i have cut it three sec, uh, members these three are the unknown forces and now the next job is to just write the equation for the equilibrium so now you can see here that as this is my section i am free to apply moment balance as well as the force balance so now let's first take the equation for the moment balance at point g now i can take the moment at point b at point a at point g as well as you are free to take the moment outside of the truss suppose these two forces are going and merge at this point so if i will take the moment at this point my equation will also be valid for this point however for the simplicity i am not going to take moment at any other point only i am going to consider the point inside my section and i know that uh, if i am going to take the moment at point g the effect of these three force will not be there and there will be only two forces one of force bc and one of force this reaction 8.67 so in one equation i will be able to get the force at bc so here is my equation bc will be multiplied with this line because the line of action of bc is this way and the perpendicular distance from point g to the force bc will be the 
3 sin 60 because this angle is 60 degree and the hypotenuse if I am going to consider this triangle the hypotenuse is of magnitude 3 so the perpendicular will be 3 sin 60. So the H value is basically 3 sin 60 and BC into H and AY into 3. So when I am solving I am getting that BC is coming out minus 8.67 by sin 60. Now what is the meaning of this negative sign? So you can see here that when I had the original truss I replaced the member with a force going away from point B and I know that when I considered a force going away that means there is a tensile force in this member. This here I can show you that if I am assuming that these are the internal force that means the nature of the force in this member is tensile and when I am considering the sectioned sec part I am applying a similar force which is going away from the point B and this is the nature of a tensile force however my answer is coming negative that means the actual nature of the force in this BC member will be of compressive. Now, but I am not going to change my sign. I know that when I will solve the complete problem at the end, I will take the uh, direction or the nature of my forces. Now, once I have calculated the force BC, I can use the second moment equation and here now I can take a moment at point B or point A. If I am going to take moment at point B, there will be many forces which going to contribute in my moment equation. So I don't want to consider too many unknowns in my equation. So I am going to take moment at point A. So this is the equation of moment balance at point A. So there will be uh, now the effect of this force will not be there as well as the line of action of force GF is also passing from point A. So it will not have any contribution in my moment equation. So the moment equation will have the 8 into 3 distance. So 8 into 3 and the sense will be clockwise. So it is positive. Then FBC into the height. That will also be positive. So FBC into the height. And now I am having force GC. As the GC is passing, uh, acting in this way, either I have to take this perpendicular distance or I can take two component of force GC. So horizontal component of force GC will be FGC cos theta or the cos uh, 60 degree and the vertical component will be FGC sin 60. And as I know that the horizontal component will again will uh, weigh, uh, the line of action of horizontal component will pass through this point. So the effect will come only because of the vertical component and the sense will be counterclockwise. So I am writing here that FGC sin 60 into 3 and I am getting the value of force GC is also minus 0 0.67 sin 60. Here also I am getting a negative sign that means the nature of the force will be compressive. Here also it will be of compressive nature actually. Now the next I can write the equation for horizontal force balance, vertical force balance. So I am showing here that now if I will write the equation for the vertical force balance. So now how many vertical forces are there in my system? There are one force acting upward here, one force acting downward here. These two are the horizontal forces and the vertical component of force C is also in the vertical direction. So I have three forces, one, two and the vertical component of this force because horizontal component will going to contribute in the horizontal force balance. So if this is the equation that FGC sin 60 acting in the upward direction. My reaction is also acting in the upward direction. However, the 8 Newton force is acting in the downward direction. So from here also I am getting the same answer which I have calculated in my previous step. So now when you apply different equation you should be very careful that whether you are going to get the same unknown which you have calculated in your previous step or there are different way to calculate the same unknown maybe the force balance equation or the moment balance equation but you should keep it in mind you can calculate only three unknowns either you are using the force balance equation or the moment balance equation the maximum unknown you can calculate using this free body diagram is three on r three only now if i will apply the horizontal force balance there will be one horizontal force BC, another horizontal force GF and the third horizontal force will be the horizontal component of force GC. So when I am putting all the forces, I am getting the GF is coming out 9 by sin 16 which is of positive sign. That means the nature of the, this force will be of tensile. So you can compare that if I would have applied a method of section, I have to first calculate joint A and joint B and joint C and then Instead of that, I have used a section plane here. I have splitted my truss in two sections. I have considered section 1 and I have calculated the unknown forces which have been asked in the question. 
Now you may think that why I have taken the leftward section, why not the rightward section? It is your choice. You can take any either of the section, maybe the right one or the left one. The, it will not affect your answer. So for a quick review, I am showing you that if I would have taken the right section, what would be your answers? So here is your right section. This was your left section. Now I am taking the right section which I am showing here. And here I am showing the equation for the different force balance and the moment balance. So in the case of right right section, the reaction will be 9.3C and these three are my unknowns. So you can see here, if I am going to vertical force balance, there will be 10, 9.33 and the vertical component of this force which will be FGC sine 60 because this is my 60 degree angle. So here is the vertical force balance equation and I can calculate that my FGC is coming out minus 6 point, 0 0.67 sin 60 and in here also this the value of this force was 0 0.67 sin 60 with the minus sign. So you can see here that the answers are not changing. The answers will be same either you are taking the left section or right section. So quickly see that if I am going to balance the moment at point C here, I will be able to calculate the force GC and if I am to going the balance of moment at this outer point, this is the special condition that if you want you can also compute the moment at any point outside the system or outside the section and if I am going to take the moment at this point and I know that this point is 3 meter away from here. This force is passing from this point, this force is also passing to this point. Then in that case the effect on the moment equation will be because of the force BC as well as the 10 and 9.33 force. So here is the equation of the moment balance at point G basically. This is the outside point G and I am getting the force BC which is minus 8.67 sin 60. This is the same value as I have calculated in the previous step. Now I am writing the equation for the horizontal force balance and here also you can see when I will balance the horizontal forces BC GF horizontal component of GC will come into the picture and when I will put these values when I, which I have calculated in the previous step I am also getting the same value which is minus 8.67 sin 60 degree. So what should we conclude? Our takeaway from this session should be that we can consider any truss we can do a sectioning of the truss based on the required unknown values and when you have the two sections you can consider any of the section to get the value of unknown. Thank you.